Okay, so now let me, I'm gonna give a, a little talk here uh, that puts some of Sonica's work in context. Um, so public invention existed as a 501c3 last year. And then um, like, like many, much of the world, the COVID-19 pandemic sort of hit us like a bomb, right? And with the permission of my board, we decided to shift work and begin working on things that would help the pandemic, uh, which of course we had not anticipated. So we had a number of projects. You'll see later, we did some robotics work and some math work and um, uh, clean water work in particular. And we were just about to start working on global warming issues when the pandemic hit and uh, we started spending a lot of time here. And it became clear to me uh, working with uh, uh, Kishan and uh, Enrique and Avinash building that list that the world did not need another ventilator project. So we did not start to build a ventilator. Rather, what we wanted to do was to build an open source ecosystem of the components of a ventilator. Uh, so by May, it was it was clear that the Western world or the wealthy nations were not really going to run out of ventilators. I, I wish I could say it was, now today it doesn't look so obvious that that's true, but um, at the time that seemed to be the case. But through much of the lower resource world, that's definitely, uh, that was definitely a problem. Um, now it's the case that throughout the summer, the ventilator team started to lose steam because there weren't news reports about shortages. And so people kept working on it, but it had probably a third of the energy uh, that it started out with in May. Um, at the same time, many teams started to learn about the complexity of FDA approval for these devices. Now, um, some of them got emergency use authorization by the FDA, which is much easier to get than uh, full FDA approval. And many of them are now working towards FDA approval. And that's kind of the one big thing that has happened. Um, unfortunately, during this period of time, we, we learned a lot of things. Um, the USA is in a bad position right now in terms of the pandemic. Even though vaccination has technically begun, it's going to be a long time before it mathematically impacts the rate of transmission. Sadly, um, PPE is still being reused in US hospitals. It's still the case that doctors are using the same mask for weeks because they don't have enough. Uh, open source medical supplies, who is gonna speak later, has done a lot more for PPE than public invention hasn't really addressed that problem. And so we don't really know what's going to happen completely in the next um, year. Um, it became clear that invasive ventilation, where you're given drugs to sedate you and a tube is put down your throat, is only rarely needed in the case of uh, COVID-19. Sadly, if you do need it, your chances of surviving are relatively low, but uh, it, it's not that common. What is needed for many people who are sick but not necessarily on death's door is therapeutic oxygen and non-invasive ventilation support. So since June, uh, Dr. Schultz and I and all the people who worked on this have been thinking of ventilators as non-invasive ventilators. It's also the case that we now know that production of therapeutic oxygen through oxygen concentrators is extremely important. And Public Invention is supporting Ben Coombs in New Zealand as the invention coach of the Public Invention oxygen concentrator, which you'll, you'll hear about in a minute. Um, so one of the things that we realized early on was every ventilator, every single ventilator in the whole world can be broken down into these components, okay? And applying my training is as a computer scientist, applying this instead of saying, we want to build a monolithic box the way a for-profit firm would, where they don't really want you to know what's inside the box. They just want the box to produce air for you. We were gonna break the box apart, show you what was inside and allow these individual components to be um, made and composed in an open source way. 
So in particular, um, Victor Suterin is here working on the um, polyvent project. An example of that is that the air drive, what I call the air drive to produce air or medical gas for the patient could be a bellows, a CPAP blower, a pump, or a pressure release valve. The doctors and the patient don't care. It's largely immaterial to them what pushes the air into the patient's lungs. Uh, so if you had a, a proper engineering interface to this, you could allow that to be swapped out. And we, the seven projects that you're going to see and in about 45 minutes uh, try to evaluate in terms of millifullers, in some ways all relate to this idea of making it possible to do that. So an example um, over here is uh, the green box is the sense module, which measures things. Um, doctors need to know what the pressure and flow going into the lungs of the patient is. Um, we, that's the main contribution that public invention made this year. We in, invented, if you want, uh, and created the Ventmon. And we actually shipped 20 of these to teams all over the world um, free of charge. And we received two $20,000 grants to do that. And we've used up about one of them now. Um, we've obligated another 11,000 to make another 20 of these devices. Ben Coombs and Laurie Clark will talk about that later on. Um, the idea here is that this could be integrated into anybody's ventilator, or it could simply be used to test ventilators for an engineering team before it's made. Um, so one of the things that, that is very important that uh, we'll talk about later is to allow teamwork in a socially distanced environment, you have to have standards of data transfers. So we created the Public Invention Respiration Data Standard or PERDS um, to allow this to happen. And Jeff Mulligan is going to talk about a data lake that uh, he conceptualized and, and wrote which has been very, very important for socially distanced teams, often on other continents, to be able to work on the same physical device and have engineers see it. And the display that you see there on the left is a piece of software called um, Vent Display that I wrote mostly in uh, JavaScript. And of course, it's free open software, which could be used by any team. So in this overall program, to try to build, take the, at one time thousands, now hundreds or dozens of engineers who are working on, on ventilators and build an open source ecosystem, there are some things that I think help. Um, engineering modularity provides supply chain resilience. For a long time, the world supply of flow sensors, which are absolutely necessary for building these devices was completely swamped. You couldn't buy a flow sensor. Um, softening and smartening the individual components allows versatility through replaceability. Replaceability could also be called hot swappability, the ability to change out components. The mutability of design allows flexibility of treatment for medical professionals. By being able to change the design, we can respond to emergencies in the future that require treatments which we cannot yet anticipate. Cooperating teams allow faster development through shortening the critical path. And finally, openness eventually provides confidence through peer review and third party testing. Okay, that is something which has not yet been achieved. You know, you can ask yourself, would you want your mother to use a ventilator made by one of the teams that Public Invention has supported? Maybe not right now, but eventually, open source medical devices should be more trustworthy and more reliable than closed source medical devices because everybody can see the way in which they've been tested. Okay, I'm taking up a little bit too much time. Um, this is a, a map of an approach uh, that we made and I, this was published in Make Magazine um, under an essay that I, that I wrote with a number of other people, uh, uh, some of whom may be here. And I just wanna point out that public invention is fundamentally technical, but we're also thinking about the social and business implications of what we're doing to try to get things deployed. So this diagram 
is our vision for how technical teams like ourselves can interact with philanthropists and the FDA and testers and volunteers to actually move from something that works on a bench to something which is actually saving lives in the field. I don't have time to go into it. It's a different talk, but we are working on that. I'm gonna cut this a little short so we have some time, but the idea is, is to build a complete ecosystem here. Um, so I'd like to point out that um, the pandemic has been horrible and a lot of people have died, but there have been a lot of people who volunteered and pitched in, um, our frontline health workers in particular. But those of us who are engineers and computer programmers and writers and video makers did our part to some extent in public invention, but also the other organizations like Engineers Without Borders and Helpful Engineering um, and Open Source Medical Supplies. Um, we are not blind to the challenges of getting FDA approval, but we're playing a long game. Uh, what we are taking out of this is the need and it's a, it's a multi-year program to eventually create a ecosystem that allows open source medical devices in a way that was never perhaps even conceived before. 